Hello everyone. So now I will be solving one problem that is not on lead code but it is on Geeks for Geeks practice. It's called distinct occurrences. So why I have chosen this problem? Because this is one of the very I mean basic, you know, not basic but basic to intermediate level dynamic programming problem and it perfectly explains some basic concepts of dynamic programming. So that's why I have chosen this problem. So let's go through the problem statement once. It says given two strings s and t find a uh, count of distinct occurrences of t in s as a subsequence your task is to complete the function subsequent count which takes in two strings as argument one is s and one another is t and return the count of subsequences uh, the input format we don't have to take care because we are given with the function itself and the output output will be we have to return the count modulo this number because the count can be bigger and uh, here the same thing is written okay so the important point over here to note is the expected time complexity is big O of n cross m so let's say n is the length of string t and m is length of string uh, s so it will be n cross m or n square you can say or expected uh, space complexity is also same n cross m uh, let's go through some examples over here let's say we are given with banana as string s and ban ban as string t so we have to find how many distinct uh, occurrences of ban as subsequence is there in banana so we can see output as 3 and how is 3 coming from here we can see first of all one occurrence is this ban one is we can take ba from here and n from here so number two another another can be we can take b from here and a n from here so total three as written over here like ban b a space n and b space a n and same is written for gigs for gigs and g so we can see six so now let's go to the whiteboard and let's see what are the patterns we can notice from this problem and how we can solve this problem so let's go to the whiteboard so i have written down the example over here and along with the index values string s is banana b a n a n a and the t which we have to find in s is b a n so now solve this problem first of all so let's say we have to search this string in this so we can either start from looking start looking from the beginning of those strings or either we can start looking from end so i prefer solving using starting from end it makes it uh, a bit easier to implement so that's why let's say we start with the end of both strings so what are the options we can have uh, let's think for a moment so let's say both the characters at the end matches which in this case they are not matching so let's say if they are not matching so what we will do so let's say we are here for this string and we are here for this string so these two characters are not matching so that means what we have to keep looking for the first matching character on s so we decrement this we come to over here we see now they are matching so if they are matching there can be two possibilities one we take these two as one consideration and look for rest of the characters except n in the rest of the two strings so that is one possibility for them what we have to do we simply have to remove uh, move those two pointers one step ahead like this will be here and this will be here or else we can do what we just ignore this and we keep it over here and we look for any other n in rest of the string we just move this pointer over here and why we are allowed to do so just because it says the ban can be a subsequence so subsequence basically means it doesn't have to be contiguous so that's why we can move this pointer to here and we are allowed to keep it over here so these are the three conditions we have to take care and we have to first do all the things recursively and i have drawn the whole recursive tree over here if you look at this recursive tree we can clearly understand how this algorithm is working and after that we can see how exactly we can apply dynamic programming in this solution so first of all let's say i have declared a function let's say fun and it will has four parameters one is s one is t both the strings and the 
length of those strings. This banana is length 6 and this t is length 3. So first of all, we will check if 6 minus 1, because it's a zero base indexing, so obviously 6 minus 1 index, so fifth index, which is indeed the last index for s and the last index for t, which is n, if they are equal or not. For first case, they are not equal. So what I have already told, we will just decrement both the pointers by 1. So as we can see from the recursive tree, as we have done, we decremented both. So it's 5 and 3. So now uh, it comes to over here and it comes to, sorry, so if they are not matching, we just have to decrement the first pointer like from here because this n haven't, we haven't found. So that's why we decremented 6 but we kept 3 as, as it is. So that means what? We made this pointer come over here and it is over here. So now we find a match. So after finding a match, we have two options. So we can see we have two options. One is we can either decrement this by 1 and this by 1. So decrementing both by ones, uh, 1 means what? It means basically we are taking these two characters as consideration for being a subsequence and we move forward or rather in this case move uh, in front and check for rest of the characters if they are matching or not. So this is one case we can take in consideration or else we can do what we can just move this pointer in string s left side and keep looking for any other ends in the left side which we exactly did over here and we kept on doing the same thing for all the indexes. So same here we uh, came over here. So the recursion, recursion tree will be depth first manner. So it will be like from here to here, here to here, then here. Then we came here and we ultimately hit a base case. So now let's talk about when do we hit a base case. So let's say after looking for all the elements, we encounter both of them are zero. Both of them are zero means what? The pointer pointers are pointing over here and over here. That means they the all the strings or all the characters of both the strings are completed and we have found out a match like we have found out this band inside this banana so that means what we encountered one such substring which matches with t so we have to return one for that reason so as we can see from this function we are returning one to the caller of it so that's why whenever both the lengths will be zero we return one so now let's check for this base case why it is returning zero so let's say uh, there can be one case where we haven't found out a specific character in s so there are still some characters left in s and we are done traversing through sorry there are some character left in t and we are done traversing through s and we haven't found out that character so that means what it will become such a way that the length of s will become zero and t will have some values so that will be one base case also so that means what we haven't found this whole t substring or t subsequence rather inside s so that that is exactly uh, signifies that the s length becoming zero and t becoming non-zero so that means t is not in s so that's when we return zero because we haven't found this complete t in s so we are returning zero for this case another case can be possible is like for uh, let's say example whenever uh, let's say this becoming zero and this remaining any positive value when can that be a uh, when can that be a thing so let's say um, uh, we can think of it like let's say we are only given with a and we have to find how many characters or how many subsequences of a are present in this s so it will eventually happen what there will be lot of character remaining in s but a will be done i mean a will be zero for t will be zero because a is already found and t will be zero but s will be remaining something so that means also we found t in s so in that case also we have to return one so we are not encountering such a case in this example for let's say but there can be a case so what are the three base cases if both are zero then we return one if either one is zero uh, sorry if this one i mean length of s is zero that means we haven't found out that so that means we return zero or else we return one 
so these things we have to keep in mind so this is the full recursive tree we can you can just pause the video and look into it we can understand clearly if we write on through it and we ultimately get the answer as 3 now I want you guys to notice one thing over here I have also marked them as well look at this function st 2 and 2 and here st 2 and 2 we can clearly see there are overlapping sub problems and whenever there is overlapping sub problems there is room for caching it and use dynamic programming for solving it for better optimization so that is exactly why we will be using dynamic programming to solve this problem so we will be converting this whole recursive solution into tabulation method using dynamic programming so now i will be going into the code editor and showing you how to convert this program into tabulation method now i will be coding the tabulation method or the bottom up dp approach uh, which already i have used uh, already i have explained in the whiteboard i will be just coding that using dynamic programming so first of all for tabulation method as usual we will be needing a dp table and for this instance the dp table will be a two dimensional table where first of all let's just calculate the length of two strings so let's call them m and n uh, for time being and let's calculate both the lengths so first of all the m will be the length of array 1 and n will be the length of array 2 so let's do so uh, it's array 1 and it's length of array 2 now we make a dp table it will be a two dimensional table initially filled with zeros so for uh, uh, let's say for underscore we are just running the loop for underscore in range it would be n plus 1 because as usual as i already told in my previous videos also like whenever we need to use m or n or any of the things as an index of mm, you know index of matrix so that means what you have to take one extra value because there will be zero you know so that's why n plus 1 and for underscore in range m plus 1 so after constructing the dp table we have to take care of the two base cases so for i in range n plus 1 so for i in range n plus 1 means what we are going through all the you know columns and we let's say are at the first row so that means dp of first row and i that means what i this row is first row so the first row being there and the column is increasing this means what this basically means that we are not having a string in s so that means our answer will be zero obviously because we have to search t in s so if we don't have s so there will be no answer so that's why zero and another base case as i already told in whiteboard explanation that is for i in range m plus 1 here we are at uh, first column and the rows are increasing so that means what we are having only the string uh, s we don't have t so that means t is empty string so here our answer will be 1 because each string has at least or rather exactly one empty string so for this case we will be having answer as 1 so I guess these two are clear why this is 0 and this is 1 because an empty string is a part of another string but a complete string is not part of an empty string so that is exactly why we are having these values so after that it is pretty straightforward again we will be having two loops for i in range one is 0 to m plus 1 another is for j in range that is uh, 0 to n plus 1 so first of all we will be checking if array 1 if array 1's i minus 1 that means last character is matching with array 2's last character or not so the last character will be j minus 1 here it will be double equals to okay so if this is the case so as from the white we also have said if this is the case we have two options so what are the options so first of all dpij will be equal to dp of we can take both the characters as uh, into consideration so that means 
both i minus 1 and j minus 1 and uh, we can look for rest of the directors in the left side or we can do what we can eliminate or ignore the character which is matching on the string s and we look for that character on the left side of the s within the remaining character so that means we decrement i minus 1 but keep j as same so this is the case for whenever they are matching or else we will be simply have to just move the last pointer or the pointer of s to the left side so it will be dp of ij whenever they are not matching the last characters dp of i minus 1 that means we move the pointer from s string to left side and we keep the pointer in t string same as it, same, same as it is so after that we just have to return the value which is at dp of m and n and also for this problem we have to modulo uh, modulate with 10 to the 1 9 so that means 10 uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so this so this is our solution i hope this will work so let's see compile and test so okay okay i have missed one bracket over here um, Oh, sorry, sorry. The bracket is not the issue. I have missed out the word in. Now it will work. So we can see the answer is coming out to be 3 and 8. So there is one little bug in our code. So we have to dig a bit and find out what we are doing wrong. So I don't usually edit this video, so there is a possibility of me having any bug. So it is for your good to know that how to uh, debug this thing. So now let's see where we are going wrong. Okay. Oh, okay, so I have made one silly mistake over here. The loops will be from 1 to n plus 1 and 1 to n plus 1. Because we have already filled up the first two and first column, so we don't have to again do it. So from second one we start, so that's why, sorry, my bad over there. So now I think it will work. Okay, and it works. So let's submit it. While submitting it, I also want to tell you one thing. Because it was already given in the problem that what is the expected time and auxiliary space complexity. We have to obey that and we already did obey that. So that's why the time and space complexity will be the same as what was expected from us. So which is indeed order of n cross m for both. But n being the length of string s and n being the length of string t. So we can see it's correct answer and accepted. So that's how to solve this problem. Uh, distinct occurrences. I would highly recommend you to just go and try this problem on your own. This will teach you a lot about dynamic programming. So thank you for.